You got it. Hi, everybody. I'm Nanette Allen. I'm the manager over Global Campus Recruiting Programs at Thomson Reuters. Been with the company now going on a year and a half. Um, I actually promoted into the role. So prior to this, I was the campus lead out of our Dallas location. Um, and now my position is global and managing the entire internship program. And then um, my right hand, who is also on this call, uh, I'm going to kick it over to Kaylee uh, now Peters. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kaylee Peters. Thanks, Nanette. You're welcome. Um, I am a talent acquisition coordinator here in Dallas as well. Um, I've been with the company for about a year and a half now, same as Nanette. Uh, we kind of joined around the same time. Um, but yeah, um, excited to get to present this to y'all and hopefully it's, you know, um, of some value and you can get something out of it and, and learn something and yeah, so I guess we can just go ahead and get started, jump right in. So just to give you a little background, Kaylee, she's kind of like the gatekeeper. So she's someone that, that sees all of the uh, interview invitations uh, that come in. She interacts, she's kind of the first person that a student would interact with with setting up some of the appointments. So she's seen a lot in terms of uh, what does that look like uh, for the interview setup? Yeah, for sure. All right. So we have some pretty pretty interesting information that we're going to share with you guys. It's kind of lifting the veil of what, what it looks like to ace your virtual interview. So in our presentation today, we're going to go over a couple of topics. The first is, you know, how do you actually prep for your interview? And uh, within that, it's uh, doing your prep for the company. So you really want to understand the company's culture, research the position, research their history, products, and services. And then uh, the third uh, segment that we're going to go over, which uh, Kaylee will, will go over in detail, is prepping yourself. So this is, you know, rehearsing and practicing, um, you know, dressing for success, prepping your surroundings and checking your tech. And then the last and final uh, segment that we're going to go over, which I'll be um, going over in detail, is prepping for the video interview itself. So what does it look like in terms of the steps in the selection process? We'll kind of show you what does that look like from the recruiter standpoint. Uh, the differences between on-demand and live interviewing, because um, now with us being in a virtual environment, there's all sorts of different uh, video interviews that exist. Um, what you should do during the video interview itself and then afterwards. All right. So um, by now, you know, each of us have dived into the wonderful world of working, going to school virtually. And we've all had roughly um, now over a year. Wow, I can't believe that, uh, of practice inter interacting over camera. And a virtual and video interview has become the norm. So for employers, video interviews um, lets multiple managers review and evaluate hundreds of candidates. And I'm going to underline hundreds. And at this point, um, you know, this is this is allowing us to meet uh, with candidates in a safe way. So we'll jump into how to help you stand out as a candidate with those hundreds of candidates that they they do come across their desk. So, um, you know, I encourage each and every one of you to creep on the company's social pages. Look for particular hashtags tagging the employer. Here at Thompson Reuters, we use hashtag TR intern, um, working at TR and BU at TR. Uh, this is going to give you kind of some of those insights of, you know, who they are as a company culture-wise. And then um, you also want to go to the company's career webpage, uh, search for their about us um, or their company culture page, and that will help you to learn more about the company itself and what are their vision, mission, and values. I think it's really important, especially when you're, you know, starting out um, shopping for who you potentially want to work for. You want to make sure that, you know, do they align with your uh, vision, mission, and values. And then thirdly, uh, LinkedIn can be a really great tool to get uh, personalized testimonials from uh, that current, uh, for the, from their current employees. And uh, you can leverage this to even make uh, connections and find out more. Uh, networking is a great tool to use uh, throughout your, your interview process. And then Glassdoor is also a great tool to get additional information from current and past employees. Um, Handshake also might be a great re resource for past intern reviews. Um, you know, this kind of says a lot behind the scenes, folks that leave the company and are currently working for the company. All right, so on this next slide, you know, we really encourage you to uh, review the job description. Highlight where you actually meet and exceed the requirements. Um, you know, you can learn about the company, its competitors, products, and its goals. 
And sometimes this information is shared on the employer's website. Um, you might even see it in their press releases, the products and services to know who they are and where they're going. So be sure to focus on how you align to the job's requirement, as well as the employer's goals and mission. So um, in, in addition to that, you want to share your accomplishments and or success stories telling um, what you've done on the job that proves your skill level to the employer. Uh, and we'll go over kind of what is the best example of doing that. And then you'll also want to study the homepage, read there about us, the contact us sections, know the industry or the purpose of the organization, and be sure that is what you expect and want to be involved in. So become familiar with the product services, know the brand names, or at least the purpose or function. And, um, and I know not a lot of students do this, but um, you know, looking at press releases or the latest news about the organization will tell you a lot about what's going on within the organization. You might even wanna look for names of senior officers or founders or highly visible employees. Are any of them familiar to you? Uh, where are they actually located? Do they have jobs posted? Does the information on the website raise any uh, questions or concerns? And then uh, the last piece is to look uh, for product or service reviews. So um, you wanna collect information about the organization, their competitors, read their annual reports if available and historical information. Uh, for those roles that are highly competitive and you, know, you wanna be able to stand out, these are all things that will kind of build your knowledge base to really connect with the recruiter to show that you, you truly know um, what the, the company is about and, and the position itself. All right, so um, in terms of you know, doing your homework, this is kind of the, um, the formula that you wanna use when you're preparing um, your actual uh, resume and your answers for the interview itself. So, um, the star format is your winning formula. And uh, with that, you know, you want to cater that around that job description. So describe a situation and event uh, you were in, what were the tasks that you were asked to accomplish, describe the actions that you took or what you did, and what did you actually accomplish and what happened. Um, if you send it around those four bullet points, it's essentially showing to the employer that, you know, you've, you've thought out how, how do your skill sets match the problems that they need solved. And so if you formulate your answers that way, it gives them tangible examples of success where you've actually um, done exactly what the job needs and your accomplishments. All right, and so in terms of the job description, um, you'll wanna highlight where you've met or ex exceeded the requirements. You can learn about the company, its competitors and products and align that there. Um, you also want to share accomplishments or success stories where um, you've done on the job, what you've done on the job proves your skill level to the employer. Um, you want to also focus on how you align those job requirements, as well as the employer's goals and mission. And then uh, study the homepage, read that about us, and then um, essentially align that to how you can uh, help them with their future needs. So that's a little bit about, you know, doing your homework piece. And then um, as far as the accomplishments and uh, putting together the winning bullet, I'm gonna give you kind of an example of what does that look like? So if you use the STAR model, if you, you know, normal bullet, what most people put down is train new employees. That really doesn't stand out to a recruiter. What you want to do is you want to um, actually map out, you know, you accomplish X by measure Y by doing Z, and that equals the winning bullet. So um, you accomplish 150K in sales in the last month by making 50 plus calls. And so for the bullet train new employees, what that would actually look like on your resume or even just answering in an interview is you increase customer satisfaction by 20% by providing effective problem resolution, training 15 plus new employees within six months. See the difference between train new employees versus here are the tangible goals that I hit, here, here are the things that I, um, and, and what time frame that you did it, and then how much did you exceed it by? All right, so um, next bullet. So you manage a company da database. 
I see that pretty often on a resume or um, even just saying, here are some of the duties that I did within um, my prior jobs. Uh, a, a star example would be you manage a client database of 15, uh, 5,000 plus accounts. You ensured accuracy and accessibility for brokers. And then, um, so this one's a pretty common one too. Checked in customers and showed them to their tables. So an elevated version of that using the star formula would be you implemented online customer check-in system to reduce wait times by 50%. Um, now you may not, maybe you may not necessarily have access to implement online customer check-in. Um, I saw a really amazing example on um, a student's resume where they talked about uh, their upsells and how much they increase upsells with certain products um, with, within the uh, restaurant industry. And that really stood out to me as a recruiter. And then uh, another example, you increase membership. So achieved 150% membership and participation increase through Twitter and table advertising campaigns. So completely different in terms of you know, showing what, what is it you're um, able to do and tangibly, what are the wins that you've accomplished? Anybody in the audience willing to practice a star model with me? Anybody brave enough? This is your opportunity to practice with a recruiter, by the way. I can try. Yeah, all right, Kayla. <laughs> um, so I'll say like an example. Um, so I worked at Forever 21 and I was um, one of the sales, I'll say associates on the floor. Um, and I don't really know, like, like a situation would be in a sense of customers getting in. And I could say like, I was able to engage with like, like ha more than half of the customers. I don't know if that works. And um, and out of the half, like one third were able to purchase something from the from the store. I don't know if that. Okay. Okay. So, so of the customers that you interacted with, so you were able to increase uh, the basket size with your interactions. Um, so, yeah. okay. So do they share with you any metrics as far as like how much, how much your average customer purchases or, um, a, or even like membership signups for the rewards programs? Uh, not really. Um, okay. Yeah, that's like the one thing that I don't have. But. So I know this is pretty typical with retail. Um, one thing that you could, you know, talk to, and I know every day they kind of share what the store goals are for the day. Maybe you could align, you know, where are your targets for the store goals and how much are you achieving of that? So maybe you're achieving like 60% of the store goals by yourself, um, which has a pretty big accomplishment. If you're, you know, with all the customer service that you provide, you're able to accomplish 60% of the day's sales. All right, okay. so Thank so you. how we how we might be able to um, do Kayla's example, so, um, during her, her shifts at Forever 21, um, she's uh, able to accomplish 60% of the store sales for the day. Um, and that's, um, and then you can also maybe even talk about, do you train any of the new folks that come on board? Um, no, that, I just did that for like two summers. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if you did, that would be something that you might want to highlight because it, it showcases your leadership skills or even just um, your willingness to be flexible. If you, you know, work in several different departments and uh, gaining that knowledge base to be, you know, cross-functional, that would be also a great example to showcase. I appreciate you being brave to, to do uh, a, uh, oh, hey, Wednesday, uh, to do an example with us. You're all right, so I am going to turn it over to um, Kaylee. And She's Kayla, gonna... was there oh. a question? I just want to make sure we we're answering that quick. Maybe not. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can pause at, at any point if someone has a question or wants to ask about an example. Um, we want this to be interactive for you guys.
let's go ahead and continue on. Thank you. All right, Kaylee, I'm going to turn it over to you. She's going to uh, talk to you about prepping yourself for the actual interview. Thanks, Annette. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and talk about prepping yourself for the interview. Um, a good idea is to practice answering the most common interview questions. Uh, it is very likely that you're going to be asked about a time you succeeded and overcame obstacles. Um, and a good website that you can use uh, is HireVue. It actually provides a hit list of some of the most common questions that you can encounter. And then you also want to record yourself on a computer or phone video um, app uh, just answering mock questions. So this will provide you with the opportunity to evaluate your answers as well as just getting more comfortable in front of the camera. And then next you want to ensure that you are dressed appropriately for the interview. This means wearing pants, solid colors, no busy patterns, um, and just making sure that your posture is correct. And then lastly, what is in the view of the background should be part of your dress rehearsal, so don't leave anything out that you wouldn't want your future employers to see. So like, for instance, my bar card over here. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then next, you want to check your technology. Uh, first, you want to choose a webcam or built-in uh, laptop camera that works. Test out the software and how it interacts with your webcam. With external cameras, you may need to indicate that that's the one that you want to use. And then for the most flattering angle, you'll want to position your webcam to be above your eye line slightly downward. But with a built-in webcam, um, you place your laptop above your eye line and in line with the top of your head. And then for your microphone, uh, a headset helps to control the background and the noise. So using your built-in microphone versus a headset could potentially create an echo and at times the sound quality may not be as good. Um, and then also could be quite jarring for the interviewer hearing themselves echo back. Um, and then lastly, remember that your tone of voice is extremely important in persuasion. For video conferencing, um, ideally you want to connect or you want a connection speed of 10 megabits per second range or better. If you are able to, hardwiring your internet connection might be um, might help with ensuring that there aren't any bandwidth issues. And lighting is just as important. So having lights on either side of you um, or behind you can help with a well-lit area. It's best to test out your camera to see if you need any additional lights. And then on the next slide, we can go over um, the difference that this can make for you. So here, you can tell that obviously the middle picture is too dark and also it's important that you know you don't want it to be too bright either where they can't see your face. Um, so it does you know lighting does matter to ensure that you have a quality video stream. Um, and then I think also if you you know use natural lighting that can sometimes help, but also just to make sure it's not too overexposed. And then next. Um, for actually during the interview, you want to make sure that you maintain good eye contact. So I recommend that you just find uh, the eye line of your camera and mark that with tape that you could easily remove. Um, and then reposition the speaker's video conference window close to the location of your webcam. That way it doesn't look like you're looking down or away. It's important to be aware that there are some differences in ideal posture between an in-person interview and a video interview. So you wanna sit upright and keep your back straight um, and then make sure that you're facing the camera and not showing too much of your side angle. And then also you want to keep um, any notes that you might have at an eye level, that way you're not looking down. Um, and then always, of course, confident, enthusiastic smiling is, is a good way uh, to try and let some of your personality shine through. Um, and then another good tip is no need to introduce yourself to every single panel member. You can simply just thank them for making time to meet with you. And then if for some reason you do get disconnected during the interview, it is a good idea to have the email um, address and contact number readily available since there may be an alternative way to call uh, if for some reason that your video does fail. All right. So I am going to go over the different video interview types. So each company um, can utilize video interviewing in different ways. So 
for the on-demand interview process flow, uh, first you submit your application through their applicant tracking system. Then uh, next steps, if um, once you submit your application, the review, recruiter reviews, and then they choose the top candidates. Uh, usually uh, the next step is an email is sent to candidates requesting a video interview pre-screen. And this is pretty much the norm uh, these days. Um, you're given a time limit to complete the video interview submission, and it's important that you check your junk or spam because um, this happens a lot. Uh, a lot of universities have kind of a filter set up. Um, so make sure you're checking your junk or spam because you may have gotten an uh, interview invitation. And then once the video interview is completed, uh, results are submitted to the recruiter. And then the recruiter reviews results and decides whether or not they want to move forward with a more detailed live uh, interview or a live hiring manager interview. And that's typically with the on-demand uh, portion. And then for the live now uh, process flow, first is you submit your application through the applicant tracking system. Next, the recruiter reviews applications, chooses their top candidates. Uh, the next step is an email sent to the candidates requesting a live interview. Here, they may request uh, available times or you get a link to schedule an interview. And then once the video interview is completed, all parties disconnect and the recruiter or hiring team debriefs. Uh, these re results are then submitted to the recruiter and the recruiter may schedule an additional video interview after that or a potential assessment test. So these are typically what you'll see on the on-demand side um, versus the li uh, live now. And then here are some of the differences in terms of on-demand versus live now. So on-demand video is usually a pre-recorded video interview. It starts when you click on the invitation link. Uh, be on the lookout in your email invitation. There may be opportunities to test out your check and links to do a practice run. Uh, typically, you're given only one practice question uh, for the on-demand interviews. And these interviews can range anywhere from five to 10 minutes. And those questions can be a mix of basic intro questions or behavioral questions. Um, depending on the role, if it's technical, there may be questions to test your overall understanding or experience. And some roles may even have role play scenarios or um, on the tech side, they may have like a, a programming assessment. And then um, the questions in this interview are typically pre-recorded videos or could populate as text questions. And then the time starts when you click OK, go or start, and you may only be given one opportunity to answer the question. So that's where the practicing piece and recording yourself can be really helpful in these instances. Um, so that way you feel prepared. And then don't be alarmed that if you haven't used the full time allotted for the question, I find that a lot of candidates, they feel like they have to fill the entire three minutes if that's what's uh, allotted for the recorded answer. You don't have to use that time. If you've answered the question, just leave it at that. Uh, and then for the live now differences, um, these interviews are, are live with another party. And it's recommended that you connect with the other party members about five minutes before the link provided. Um, if you know, depending on which platform it is, you may have a lobby that you'll be waiting in just like here at Zoom. Um, and then these interviews could include one or more interview um, interviews asking questions over video. And then depending on the role, there may be a use of interactive whiteboards, maybe even screen sharing to allow you to demonstrate hard skills like coding, Excel, or even just presentation skills. And then these interviews can last anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. And the single interview is, uh, interview is typically 30 minutes. Panel interviews can last anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes. And depending on the role, the questions can vary from behavioral, technical, or even role play scenarios. And then there are some positions that may include that live presentation in front of a panel, especially if you're uh, doing anything persuasion-wise or sales-wise or um, anything that's highly technical where you may have to do some sort of consulting with partners. And um, highly, highly recommend this. It's okay if you ask to take notes. All right, so any questions on these two sides? I know I've gone over a lot.
And then what I'll also do is I'll do kind of a share of what, what it looks like um, from the candidate perspective on a on-demand video, which is the higher view interview. All right, so you've completed your interview. And after your interview, you definitely want to make sure that you send a thank you to all your interviewers. Um, if, if it was a live interview, you can simply forward it to your recruiter and they'll ensure it goes to the appropriate parties. To add an extra touch to your thank you, it's always great to weave in some of the memorable notes um, within your thank you note. And I also recommend that you create a spreadsheet with notes from the companies that you've interviewed with. And this will help you in recalling the role about the company and whom you spoke to. Um, and, you know, I, I think this is really key and important, especially if you interviewed with a company maybe a while back. Um, that way you can recall, oh, this is the recruiter, this is the position, and what you know about the particular role. And so that way you're not caught off guard. And then lastly, it never hurts to ask the timeline for selection. Uh, what does it look like? Are there any additional steps that you should prepare for? Um, this kind of helps you with understanding what, what does that look like? All right, so um, I'm gonna open it up to you guys for any questions before I, I go to the behind the scenes peak for the on-demand interview. I have a question. Oh. Oh, yeah, sorry. all right, we got, we got several questions, all right. Um, I saw Amy light up and I'm not sure who the other voice was. Amy, go ahead. Okay, um, so I actually had two interviews today, so I wish I would have done this before. Um, but I was just wondering, um, isn't like an interview mostly our like question and answer? Um, how do you know like when to have like more of a conversational interview? I know like one of my interviewers today, they just said that they wanted to do an informal interview. Okay. Um, but like if they don't specify, is it like I just kind of went with what they were saying or? Um... So tell me what sort of questions they asked and then I can have a better idea of what type of interview you had. Yeah, well, kind of was more like situational. Okay. And it was a mix because there was two uh, people interviewing me. So, and it was the other one was just more like general questions. Like, tell me about like a strength and um, like, like what is an important like um, skill to have kind of sort of um, questions. And then the other ones were more like situational. Um, so I did use a star model. High five. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah. But um. I was just wondering because like halfway in the interview, the other person talked about how um, kind of the other interviews were more conversational style. So I was wondering. Like, yeah. So, I mean, even with them saying that it's a conversational interview, they still want some format of the star model. So high five that you, you knew that ahead of time to formulate your answers that way. And hot tip as a recruiter, even if they say it's informal, it's still, mm -hmm. it's still very much formal. <laughs> uh, they just kind of want to alleviate some of the anxieties by saying that, mm -hmm. but they are still kind of looking for some uh, particular answers. So if they were saying, you know, tell me about some of your strengths, you know, they want to see, do you, are you self-aware? Um, not only are you self-aware, are you self-critical and understand, you know, what is it that you bring to the table? And it's always great to have kind of that self-assessment to understand, do your skills match up for what the job description says? So I would kind of, based on the job description, I might map out, okay, this is what I know about myself. This is something that's definitely a strength of mine. And this is how I can apply the strength to the role. Um, I know it's like, when they say it's informal, don't believe them. Because <laughs> really they're looking for something. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they answer your question. And then I saw we had another question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, it's more like, it's not really an interview, but um, so right now, like I'm looking more in like, so I'm graduating fall 2020, uh, 2021, I mean, and like um, I'm looking for like full-time positions. 
And like lately I've been doing in like informational interviews, like trying to know about like the, I guess the employer's position and knowing like more about the company. And yep. I wanted to know like how, I don't know if this works with like this presentation, but like, how do you go about that particular, I'll say interview style um, using this model, let's yeah. say. So in that particular model, when you're doing informational interviews about the employees, I would um, I'd really target, you know, questions about the company culture. What are some of the things that they've noticed in terms of, you know, where the company's headed? Um, you know, what do they enjoy about their jobs? Um, you know, what's one thing that they would want to change about the organization? Uh, I would dig into anything that you can't find out on their social media, their about us page that you really want to know about the organization or the position itself. Um, and so that will help equip you for, you know, if there is a position that aligns to your goals career wise, or even personally, um, you know, how do you prepare for that interview? So maybe there's some things that you can ask about the role itself. What are some of the challenges? Is it a new position? Is it something that they hire for fairly often? Um, you know, what's been the promotion rate, especially if it's like a new grad role? What are some of the roles that you've seen other people promote into? Because um, you want to make sure that it's, it's a, a company that you can grow within because you guys are so new in your career. I know I just rattled off a lot, but. Um, Thank you. It actually helps a lot. I'm taking oh, some notes. Yeah. Thank awesome. You. And okay. total props for, by the way, for taking initiative and going out and soliciting informational interviews, because I think it's a great way to both be growing your network and then gaining exposure to other opportunities. And so I almost think of it as a, a little bit of a sales game as well. When you're closing out that informational interview, it's great to ask, you know, based on what you've learned about me, are there other opportunities that you think might be a fit for me that I should be, you know, looking into, or are there other individuals that would be uh, beneficial to have a conversation with? It might be a great way to get more leads on other opportunities to follow up with as well. And that's, you know, Matt, you make an amazing point on LinkedIn. So there's a way that you can search for a particular company and different connections. And maybe it's the aspiration role that you wanna eventually move into. And um, that's the amazing part of LinkedIn. Everybody's pretty open about you know, sharing connections um, and they're open to kind of talking about what they do for the company and what would get you there. So you might be able to even learn about some of the skill sets or classes that might align um, that you might need to take, or maybe some additional workshops, or um, even company-wide workshops that you can take part in. So yeah, great point, Matt. Any other questions? All right, so I'm going to go to the slide where we can kind of show you what does it look like once you get to the video interview, because I know some of you guys are already doing video interviews right now. So if you haven't, this kind of gives you a sneak peek of what, what it would look like from the candidate perspective. Um, I have so, one last oh, question. Yeah, go ahead, um, Kayla. It's more in like an example, like I'll say like, what is as a recruiter, like do you have like a, like a template or something that you want to see from a, like a, your interview, we, I'll say the student that is coming in to like, in, that you're gonna interview, do you have any like, do you have like the best, I'll say, um, way to present themselves? Or do you have an example of like a student that you interviewed that was really good? And um, I don't know, something that like you wanna share? Yeah, I, I do. So are you talking about like resume format and then highlighting strengths? Or are you talking about um, like the ones that actually got the interview? Yeah, like the people that actually got like the interview, like how was that interview like, um, and what's something that really like struck you or something like that? So the big things in the interview is every single time if they're able to tie in real life examples of where they accomplish, you know, what's being asked in the behavioral question. Um, 
and that's that's where that star format comes into play. It kind of helps to elevate like, oh, wow, okay. So um, you're able to succinctly you know, showcase your talents and what you bring to the table. Um, and what I can do, um, I have another presentation and I can find this before the time is up to show a couple of different examples of you know, resumes that stood out. Um, but as far as higher view, I wanna get through this so you guys have this example to see the back, back side of it. So after your interview, um, you know, you'll get kind of the invitation for, or sorry, before you get to the interview, you'll get an invitation for, this is the higher view interview. So this is kind of what the email invitation will look like. It'll show the position, how long the interview is. And then um, there usually is a quick link on uh, tips to do a higher view interview. Highly, highly uh, encourage you guys to check that out. And then there's also a link to kind of check your uh, webcam, your microphone, make sure everything's in working order. And then um, here on the next slide, um, you know, you'll get kind of that opportunity to, um, they'll have an intro video to learn a little bit more about the position or the company. Um, this can be a variety of videos. Um, could be by the recruiting uh, recruiter, hiring manager, or the company. And then, so this is what it looks like behind the scenes. So here um, you'll have kind of test your practice question. Um, you can check your camera placement, your mic check, adjust lighting if needed. And then you have your uh, practice question opportunity. So here, what to expect. So starting at the top, you'll see how long you'll have to record your answer. In this case, there's three minutes. Um, how much prep time you have to prepare your answer before recording. Here they give you uh, 30 seconds for the prep time. And on the bottom of the screen, you'll have the option to hide your video. I know sometimes it's pretty jarring to see yourself. <laughs> you don't want to be distracted by watching yourself. So there is that option to hide. And then at the bottom, you can see if the microphone is actually picking, your, picking up your voice. And then here, um, this is kind of an example of one of those behavioral questions. So on the side at the top of your video interview, you'll have the countdown of how long you have to prep. Uh, employers can give you anywhere between 30 to 45 seconds. Um, and so this is kind of an example of a practice question. And then um, here, it'll show um, how much time you have to respond at the top. If you finish your answer before the three minutes, just click done answering. Um, I find this a lot in, in the asynchronous videos where uh, the student feels like, oh, I have to fill all of this, this space. But if you have answered the question and you feel confident in that, just click done answering. Um, and then on your playback adjustments, uh, you can practice the answers, make sure any adjustments need to be done at that point. And then um, here's kind of, um, this goes over how many questions you'll be asked and if there are any specific instructions with your video recording. So in this particular um, video interview, there's five questions. There, you're only given one attempt to record a response and each of them will have its own time limit. And then um, this is what it looks like in terms of um, once you start your recording. Notice that I have my video mask. Once you hit next, you'll have a moment to take a breather between questions if you like. And when you're ready, you can click next question. So that's kind of what the back end looks like once you're actually in the video interview. Any questions on that? Anybody have any feedback on the, this kind of video interview? Because this is also new, I'd be really curious, has anyone gone through this format of interviewing? I do think uh, as technology continues to be more integrated in how we do things, it'll be more and more prevalent. So it's great that we're getting the instructions here. Thank you. Yeah, so this is, you know, I, I know a lot of bigger companies now are utilizing some form of kind of this pre-recorded question. One thing to note, sometimes it can be a little bit jarring because you have nobody to interact with. And so it could be, a video that's uh, the recruiter asking the question, or it could just be text. And so you kind of have to practice how to interact with that um, and still be engaging on camera. And I know that's kind of like, oh, I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> so there's no way to like 
have inflection or, you know, have your personality shine through. Um, I will tell you the ones that stand out with these uh, recorded interviews are the ones that kind of try to treat it that way. So um, that's kind of the behind the scenes recruiter tips. All right, well, um, that's it for the presentation. Is there anything else, Matt, that you want us to go over? Any questions that you've kind of seen um, or witnessed? I think this has been uh, really beneficial, a ton of information. We will keep our recording uh, of this event. So if anyone wants to refer back to this as well, um, if it's possible to also include uh, your LinkedIn information in the chat bar, it would be yeah. great uh, to continue to stay in touch with each of our hosts today. And I think the the last thing that you know I would ask is if, I've basically had this type of instruction, you know, how best do you encourage, how should we be practicing, you know, and, and how do we get to that interview point? So we're in this virtual environment. So I would challenge each and every one of you guys to do some mock interviewing, even within this group uh, right here. Um, that kind of helps make it feel a little bit more natural. And then I'm gonna drop a couple of links for you guys. Um, the first one, if you want to drop your resume, um, you're welcome to do that. We love to track, you know, who attended our events and then invite you for any future events that we might be hosting. So that's your ability to drop your resume. And then this is our open and active internship positions that we're currently hiring for here at Thomson Reuters. Um, and so this is a link of our open roles. And then, um, and then my LinkedIn, there's only one of me, really easy to find me. Uh, I'll drop that link here. And then, so Kaylee, I know you see a lot from the candidate perspective. Is there anything that they need to be mindful of, um, you know, as they're getting these invitations for interview? And while you're doing that, I'm going to pull up the example that you asked for, Kayla, on uh, resumes that stood out. Um, I guess my only advice would be to fully read through, um, you know, everything you're getting in your confirmation email just to make sure you're not missing anything. Um, a lot of times, you know, we'll provide um, steps by how to join the interview or what to do, you know, if something goes wrong in the interview. And a lot of times people don't read through, you know, all the way. And so when that stuff does happen, you know, they don't really know um, how to move forward. So yeah, just, you know, make sure that, that you read through everything and you're well prepared for the interview. Just about got the presentation pulled up here. Give me one second. And while she's doing that, are there any other questions that anyone had today? I have a question. Um, how soon should we send thank you notes? So, I mean, especially if you want to remember <laughs> what actually happened in the interview. Um, after the interview happens, you know, if you wanna wait an hour or even a day after the interview, um, either one. Now, if you're like doing a thank you and then uh, asking for, you know, next steps in the interview process, you could give it a couple of days, but I would try to do it pretty, pretty fresh, you know, the day of, next day at the latest. Thank you. All right, so um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And then Matt, this is another presentation that we do um, for the resume review workshop. But um, let me go over the actual resume examples here. Okay, so this is an example of uh, a tech resume. And this is a student that actually did get hired uh, with us. Uh, notice how it's pretty clean, easy to read, shows their skills, um, level of expertise. Uh, What's, and I know you guys work while you go to school. Uh, she highlighted how many hours that she worked during the school year. And then she showcased some of the projects you worked on and then what each of those products um, included. So this kind of, it's one page, shows um, kind of what that looks like um, with her past internship 
experience as well. So that's a tech example. And then uh, this is a marketing example. So in this particular one, she uses a lot of the star formatting. So this includes her our metrics. Um, it's, you know, with that, you notice that she has specific skills that also adds value. But um, what we would recommend is removing Microsoft Office. That's pretty standard. Almost everybody has that now. Um, and then one other major recommendation I would make is that she should remove her high school info. Um, as she adds her full-time experience, she needs to have a little bit more space. Um, and eventually she could um, uh, remove her serving position and her tutor role to kind of make more room. Um, you notice that she does use that star model. Some idea of what could be removed is to save space might be um, who might have some similar items on theirs. So this is kind of an example of a marketing um, standout candidate. Notice how the format, she has her education at the top and then her internship and then the other experience uh, and then any, any extra um, uh, jobs that she may have had. And then this is a sales exam, or sorry, this is a finance example. Uh, here, this is someone that's had a couple years of experience with their work experience and they've continually advanced their career. So he's used this to move forward with his fourth role at Thompson Roy as a, a senior analyst. Uh, so he does a really great job of showing his activities, how he's involved in the company, um, highlighting his co-chair role at Latino Employee Network. Uh, so for someone that's not in a leadership role, but is able to demonstrate that he does have that, um, one thing that you know he could probably take off is some of the high school items, since now he's pretty heavily involved in his uh, career. And um, this is kind of one of those resumes where, you know, we want to make sure that it includes all of his, his experience that he has as a new grad. And then um, this is another sales example, very easy to read, showcases her extracurricular activities, um, and then her skill levels and awards. Um, this is also someone that, uh, that landed an internship. And um, with this, when we scan a bunch of resumes as a recruiter, um, you want to make sure that you're uh, able to capture all of the right information for the qualifications the job speaks to you. And we're able to do that in seconds. Um, her extracurricular activities are always great to showcase, you know, other interests or skills, especially if they're relevant. Um, you know, if it's been, you know, within the community, uh, she's outgoing, kind of demonstrates her uh, sales ability, and this sets her apart from some of the others. Um, and then she also has a lot of her accomplishments. So she's won several awards. Um, and then I think, are we at time or almost at time here? Any questions so far? I have a couple other examples I can share with you guys. Yeah, I think maybe just one or two more examples and then we can close it out. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. And then this is another example of a technology example. Um, she's also an intern that uh, was hired on. Uh, it's packed with a lot of info, but it's all very relevant. It showcases a lot about herself. In tech, it's important to um, learn the school, school content, but for TR especially, we look for those who have stepped outside of their comfort zone. Um, have they implemented what they've learned in other areas, especially in projects? And she lists uh, her technical skills, co-curricular activities, and it really shows her involvement in engineering, tech, computer um, science, but also those interests um, and experience such as her broomball team member, diversified shows she can work well on a team. And soft skills are important within the tech, uh, tech sphere. So uh, those extra interests and activities show that she has that. Um, the only recommendation I have with this is just creating a little bit more space between um, some of the bullets. Um, but I know that was probably pretty hard to do considering it's very content rich. Um, so most people say, you know, with, with you being early in career, one page, but I'm okay if it's two pages front and back is one page. Um, and, you know, we move pretty quickly as in terms of, you know, what, what content is in the resume itself. Um, and then let's see here. There's a, I have another um, 
this website right here, which I'll drop, sorry about that. I, I can drop this link. This also gives you a little bit more um, guidance on, on your resume uh, building. And then um, this is another sales example. This one uh, is a great one to kind of show some of the SMART goals and metrics. Um, this one's pretty clean and easy to read, kind of goes over her projects that she's worked on and that showcases maybe she doesn't have that experience from the work perspective, but she had it uh, from a project perspective. And then um, this is another tech example. This one's an uh, example of the two pages, one page, very, very content rich. Um, there's a lot of info on here. Uh, what I would have done on his is I probably would have taken out the professional summary and bumped his education and certification to the top. Um, but this is another example of a, a, an intern that was converted to full-time. All right, so that's it. I'll go ahead and